Hi, Dr. Kennedy here for another episode of Tom Kennedy's Science. Now in this lecture, we're going to talk about how does tomata open and close. Of course, this is a tale of hormones and, you know, my favorites, the proton pumps. I know, I get to talk about proton pumps again. I know, it's weird that I get so excited about proton pumps, but you know, proton pumps and mitochondria, cell biology, I love this but it's very important for plant physiology as well. You know, the stomata, these are tiny openings on the underside of leaves. And they were a major evolutionary innovation in plants that allowed them to adapt to a drier environment because now they could control the amount of water flowing through them. So if they became drought stressed, they could close their stomata and prevent further water loss. So pretty big evolutionary innovation. Now, stomata are tiny. They're surrounded by basically two guard cells. And these guard cells, they can open and close. And they do that by depending on their shape. But before I jump into how we do that, I just want to remind you that this is not the only way that plants can respond to their environment. They can respond to light. They can respond to touch. They can respond to herbivory and gravity. And, of course, they respond to light. And that makes sense because, well, plants are photosynthetic. They need the light. And so the stomata it would come as no surprise that they would open and close based on light, but also based on drought as well. Now, how do plants do this? How do they respond to their environment? Turns out it's a lot like we respond to our environment, right? You have to have sensors and then you have to have hormones. And hormones, these are chemical messengers. Okay, and one we're going to talk about today is ABA, not to be confused with the 1970s pop band ABBA, which if, you, which if you've ever watched the movie Mamma Mia, you might be very familiar with their wonderful tunes from the 70s. So, we have this phototropic response. You know, this is a responding to light. You know, at night, plants can't photosynthesize. So close your stomata, save your water. When you get light in the morning, that's a great time to be photosynthetic. Open up your stomata. This allows water to passively move from your roots up through the tree or your plant and out the leaves through transpiration. So you want to open your stomata and you want to close them at night, but you also want to be able to close your stomata if you're getting dry. One response will cause the stomata to open, it's a light response, and another one will cause them to close. And that is a signal produced by the roots saying, hey man, I'm drought stressed. We don't have enough water, let's shut it down. Okay, so we saw phototropins, that's how plants can bend toward light, while they're also important inside of leaves for opening and closing the stomata. Now, in response to drought, or when roots become drought stressed, they produce a hormone called abscisic acid, ABA. And they'll produce this hormone and it'll go up through the xylem and into the leaves. And the stomata will receive this signal. And guess what? It will cause a cellular response, causing this guard cells to close. In this case, we want to either open up the stomata and close the stomata. So we've got these two stimuli and we're going to get a similar response. We're going to change the shape of the cell. Now the way that we change the shape of the guard cells, the two guard cells that surround the stomata, is we're going to alter water potential. And the way you change water potential is by changing your electrolyte balance. Because remember this, no plant can actively pump water. The way you move water around is by changing your water potential. So water is going to flow from high to low potential. So here it is. If you want to add water to your cells, you lower the water potential in your cell, the cell will swell up. If you want your cells to get smaller, you increase water potential and water will exit the cell. So let's take a closer look at how the stomata open and close. We're just changing the guard cells, right? So when guard cells lose turgor pressure, which means they're losing water, which means you're raising water potential inside the guard cells, right? You're getting electrolytes out of there. 
the guard cells are going to lose their trigger pressure. They're going to close, okay? Now, on the flip side, you want a guard cell to open. You need to increase trigger pressure, which means you need to move water into the cell. The way you move water into the cell is to decrease water potential, which means I'm going to add electrolytes into the cell. So how do we do this? All right, let's start with the phototropin. Hey, it's first thing in the morning. Sun is rising. Plants are ready to go. They got to start photosynthesizing. And in the morning, it's cooler, it's a little bit moister. It's a great time for plants to photosynthesize. So blue light strikes a protein called phototropin. And then what these phototropins do, in this case, they're going to increase proton pump activity. Now these proton pumps, what are they gonna do? They're gonna start pumping protons out of the cell. Now we're doing a couple different things here. We're creating, you know what I'm gonna say, an electrochemical gradient. We're storing potential energy as a membrane potential that, that cell can use to do work. Okay, now I have created a more positive environment outside my guard cell. All right, so relative to the inside, we're getting more positive. The inside is getting more negative. We've got potassium ion channels. So what happens is the potassium ions are literally pulled into the cell, right, down their electrical gradient. They might be going against their chemical gradient, but that's okay. The electrical gradient is stronger, so they're doing facilitated diffusion. Is that secondary active facilitated diffusion? I guess so as they pull them into the cell, that lowers water potential. Secondly, here's what happens. There's also a symporter involved. This is secondary active transport. The protons, they are out of equilibrium with the inside of the cell. So they're gonna go through this symporter, and as they're going through the symporter, their potential energy is transformed to kinetic energy. They're gonna do work, and they're gonna drag chloride ions into the cell. Now we're adding potassium ions, we're adding chloride ions into the cell. We're lowering water potential. Water flows from high potential to low potential. The cell begins to swell, right? And as you increase your electrolytes inside the cell, the cell swells, the guard cell opens. All right, now you need to close the guard cell. All right, day is warming up, ground is drying out. The roots go, hey man, not enough water down here. So they send ABBA, not the sweetest rock band. I know that'd be really cool, right? You could imagine like cells responding to the music of ABBA. No, they wouldn't do that. They have no way of receiving it, the signal. So at any rate, ABBA, acidic acid, gets up to the guard cells. And then all of a sudden, when ABBA gets to these guard cells, the guard cells have receptors, it's going to cause several changes to occur. One is going to open up chloride ion channels. Remember, we've been pumping through the symporter chloride ions into the guard cell. Now that we've opened up these ion channels, chloride ions are going to flow back out of the guard cell. Okay. And then also, we're going to open up potassium channels. So ABBA is opening up two ion channels, chloride channel, potassium ion channels. And now our electrolytes are flowing out of the cell. And as electrolytes flow out of the cell, water potential increases. We know that water is going to flow from high potential to low potential. Water will begin to exit the cell. It's going to start closing. And also the ABBA, I know it sounds so awesome, abscisic acid, also through the action of calcium, stops these proton pumps. It inhibits their activity, and that prevents the cell membrane of the guard cells from repolarizing. So you think about this, we're shutting off the pump, we're opening up the ion channels, these ions flow out, you know, the water potential increases, the water leaves the cell, the cell shrinks, and the guard cells close. So there you have it. That's how it works. That's how the guard cells can open or close in response to both light or drying, or even at night too, okay. Well, that was a shorter lecture than I've been doing. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you enjoy learning about these guard cells because they're pretty cool. This has been another episode of Tom Kennedy Science.